my friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. It's Monday, April 18th, tax day, and I have to get my check in the mail today. Yeah, I gotta actually finish my taxes yet. I I got 99% of it done, but I just need to go back through it, double check it, and uh, add a thing or two and mail in my check. Those of you who are waiting on your refund, probably the reason you didn't get it is because uh, the government's waiting for me to send in my check before they can send you yours. <laughs> so I'll get it in the mail today. You're welcome. Anyway, uh, yeah, yesterday was Easter Sunday, so happy uh, belated Easter. I celebrated Easter by pretty much not doing anything all day. Just kind of sat in my chair, watched YouTube mostly, really didn't do hardly anything. It was kind of a crummy weather day here, cold and wet and drizzly, and I just didn't feel like doing anything outside, and it was the perfect day to just sit still. So I did. And honestly, I gotta tell you, I felt guilty all day felt guilty. I mean, like, I felt like I should be doing something. I just, I can't, I can't shake that feeling. I don't know about you, but I seriously cannot sit down without feeling guilty. I just can't. I don't know why. And one more significant thing happened this morning. My 11-year-old grandson, Isaac, got his first turkey this morning, along with his father. Uh, my son, JR, and, and Isaac were out turkey hunting called in a nice gobbler, and here's a picture. So I hope you enjoyed that picture there of my uh, grandson Isaac with his first turkey. On Saturday, we did have a visitor show up, and he picked up that base that you saw me restore. Dr. Dwayne from Arkansas came here, and uh, he seemed to be happy with the base and the job we did on it and everything, and um, the base seal still seemed to be holding true, so I think everything's going to be fine on it. Well, Dr. Uh, Dwayne brought me some gifts. First thing he brought me was this, and that is, if you can't read it, that is some Alaska birch breakfast syrup. <laughs> he saw me making the syrup out of the walnut trees, and uh, he brought me some birch syrup, which I thought was kind of cool. I will uh, be sure to use that. <laughs> if not on a pancake, on a biscuit. I'll, I'll use it somewhere. Uh, so thank you, Dr. Dwayne. He also, being a doctor, brought me a lot of other stuff. He brought me a lot of syringes. You know, quite a few syringes, in fact. And here's the, the needles for them. And yet another syringe and another syringe. So he stocked me up on syringes and a bunch of needles. And he brought me a spinal tap, a real long needle that uh, he said you can bend it, flex it a little bit, uh, and uh, you know bend it into a shape you need it to bend into. I don't think it's going to bend as much as I need it on uh, you know Kim's. Um, what was that thing called? Bazooki? Yeah. You know we had to bend around and come back up and get under a, it was, that was like a J bend. And I don't think this will bend quite to that degree, but it might, you never know. But uh, I do thank you, Dr. Dwayne, and I appreciate it very much. Uh, I'll put this in my, you know, stash over here. <laughs> thank you so much. I'm not gonna have any actual work today or anything that I can show you because I'm kind of in between. I gotta get back on that Gibson on that finish because I've just been, letting it dry and I figure if the more I let the cure and the next time I sand it the better and my mandolin the uh, world's finest mandolin ever built by a human so to speak <laughs> anyway that one is uh, just sitting hanging too because I just I really got other things on the plate I do want to tell you that uh, I did finally get out and look for some mushrooms and I did that on Saturday and I found 13 in the first location, and then I found 29 in the second location. And in a third location, I didn't pick it, but I found one, and it was really tiny, so I just let it sit there. I, people always say things like, let them grow, let them grow. You know, well, I've never seen one grow, honestly. Once they pop up, 
I truly have let them set for a day or two many times and I've never seen any additional size put on. Some of them I've even let sit there for several days and I've never seen them change size. So I don't think this little one that I found is going to grow, but it was so small it wouldn't have mattered anyway. Not much point in picking it. But that third location ought to start producing any day now. So, I'm, you know, that was Saturday and today's Monday. I may go back out there this afternoon and look. You just never know. <laughs> but I've got some footage for you. I thought you might enjoy it. So here it is. Well, the adult Easter egg hunt is on. Do you see it? Right there. Finally found one. That's the first one this year for me. Well, I guess the hunt is on because here's number two. Do you also see number three hidden in there? Can you see it? <laughs> yeah, he's right behind it. And guess what? Here's number four right over here. I, I just saw that one as I was making this video. So there you go. Now we're now the hunt is on. And there's two more. I think that makes six. So we're doing pretty good. Go, to find, go from finding absolutely nothing, and now here's lucky number seven. Can't believe it, right? There, do you see it? And here's number eight. Not very big. But big enough. And here comes number nine. Do you see it? Right there. Again, not huge, but big enough to eat. Well, after number nine, I got to thinking, well, I ought to find three more and make it an even dozen, right? Well, guess what? Here's one right here, hiding under these leaves. That's the biggest one so far. That's ten. Here's eleven. There's twelve right there, if you can see it. I don't know if you can see it or not. And I saw thirteen. 13 right up there, a baker's dozen. I don't know if you can see it or not. It's kind of hard to see in the video. And I don't want to step over there because I'm afraid I'll step on some. After finding those 13 up in my woods, I decided to come along the county road, which is where I find quite a few every year. And I was just driving along here and looking out the side, and I think I spotted one. Now this one looks like it's already dried up maybe the frost got it or something can you see it I guess maybe you know something got to it I don't know well here's a couple more and I guess I'm gonna quit filming after this see that big one right there and then there's another one right here can you see it I can't the sun's so bright I can't tell if I have it in the viewfinder. But there it is, I think, right in the middle. And I guess I'm gonna quit filming them. I see one more way over there. Can you even see it? It's, I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's, it should be, I think it's in the middle of the screen. Well, I gotta tell you, here along the road, I have been finding them like crazy and here's just an example here's two more that you can see right here and here and then just over here there's another one and then over here is an even bigger one can you see that big monster wow he's a big one here I am on the edge of the road again and uh, spotted these from the four-wheeler. A group of three. Can you see them? Oh my goodness. It's crazy. I don't know if there's any more here, but there's for sure three. Oh, there's another one right up there. 
So there's four. It's hard to see them sometimes. Anyway, there he is right there, four of them. That one and these three here. So there's, and then here's right from the same spot, here's two more. One's easy to see, the other one's kind of pointed right at the camera there, so it's hard to see it, but it's there. Well, you notice the 13 I found first. I've split them all in half and I've got them in, I've rinsed them a bunch of times. They have little tiny bugs in them, they always do. And I've put them in salt water and I've rinsed them again a couple of, an hour or so later and I got them in fresh salt water again. So you just have to do that. So I found 13 and then 29 more down by the road. Oh my gosh. And these are big ones. I mean, that's a really big one right there. You can see by based on the size of my finger, you know, and there's some really nice uh, mushrooms there. So um, these are what we refer to as the black mushroom. And these are the white ones. And these were all down by the road. These were all in the valley right next to the house. Well, after finding 13 in one area and 29 in another area i thought i'd come up on the hill behind the house and this is way up high on the hill and people say you don't find them up high but you do i find them up here all the time and i found just one so far and it is tiny can you see it there it's just a little bitty thing right at the end of my finger and i am just going to let it grow I mean, I'm going to let it go. Let me say it that way. I'm not going to pick it, and I'm going to see if it changes size. I don't believe it will. I never have seen one change size, but people say they will, and so I've tried it a half dozen times already, and I've never seen one grow even, even a tenth of an inch. I mean, they just never have changed. So I don't expect this one to change either, but I thought I'll give it a day or two and see what happens. I believe this is what they call the big red uh, right here um, it's it would be considered a false morel it's not really a morel um, it people uh, eat these around here these big red ones um, they actually grow earlier than the morels typically but uh, I didn't find this one until the same day I'm finding the morels and you can tell it's been eaten by bugs it looks like quite a bit but they're quite a bit bigger and, and uh, you know, uh, different looking than a, an actual morel. Uh, but people claim they eat them just like morels. And uh, what I've heard is it can make some people really sick. Um, I'm not going to take the chance because I'm probably that person. And anyway, I am going to cut it, though, just to see what it looks like. So I've cut this open, and you can see that it has no hollow stalk. I mean, there's a little piece of hollow there, but the, the but the morel is really a hollow stalk. There's very little material inside the stem. So that's another way you can tell it's not a morel. Um, people could mistake this for, for a morel because a lot of the morels do grow weird and misshapen because they'll grow up underneath a uh, leaf or something and then they'll get a bulbous head on them. But you can always tell a morel when you cut them open because the stock is completely hollow. And so there you go. That's just an example. We call these the big red around here. People do eat them, but I would not eat them. And uh, some people call that a beef steak, I think, but I'm not really sure about that. Uh, all I know is I just don't eat them. I hope you enjoyed looking at uh, the mushroom finds there and uh, seeing how I go about it there. Uh, it, uh, if you notice there, there were two different varieties. Uh, they're all morels, but there's, according to what I've seen in the conservation magazines, there's basically three different morels in, in our area anyway. There's a black morel, which were those small ones, the first 13 I found, they were all black. When I say black, they really aren't black, but they're dark compared to the others. Or at least they don't look black to me. <laughs> Here we go with the colorblind thing again. Kind of charcoalish colored, if you ask me. 
But anyway, there's there's those, and then the other ones that I found along the road were all the white morels, the bigger ones, and the white ones get bigger too. I can't tell a bit of difference in their taste. My wife fixed uh, some of each. They were all so doggone good that uh, I almost uh, lost my eyesight because uh, my tongue was out licking like that and just about knocked my eyeballs out. <laughs> Anyway, hope you enjoyed today's uh, vlog. We'll see you tomorrow.